Your graduates, ladies and gentlemen, let me call upon Dr. Entwistle to give the convocation address. Dr. Entwistle. Thank you, Dr. Barbieri and Chancellor Menard. I am indeed humbled to receive this honorary doctorate from my alma mater, and I extend my sincerest gratitude to Concordia University. Je suis tellement heureux d'être avec vous aujourd'hui. A number of years have now passed since I was sitting where you are now, sadly about to receive my bachelor degree in economics. I can tell you, however, that the knowledge and the experience that I've gained during my years at Concordia, I believe, are absolutely still relevant and vibrant in my life today. And they've helped shape my passion for innovation and answering challenges with a collective team. I'd like to take this opportunity to extend my heartfelt congratulations to the faculty, to the administration, and to the students for your leadership in business education and your many contributions to our society. I'd also like to take this opportunity to congratulate and applaud you, the graduating class of 2012. Give yourself a round of applause. Without a doubt, your accomplishments are impressive. And you should be all, in your hearts and in your minds, immensely proud of what you've achieved and what you will achieve into the future. Vos réalisations sont remarquables, et votre avenir sera plein de succès. Your education at one of North America's preeminent universities has provided you with the academic knowledge, with the practical skills needed to launch rewarding careers in your chosen fields. As you progress your careers, you embark upon an unprecedented era of challenges. In a world infused with a fragile global economy, incessant innovation, and shifting demographics, that are impacting our societies. I urge you, I implore you, seize the opportunities that always accompany these challenges. Building upon the strong foundation of your education whilst maintaining an insatiable appetite for lifelong learning and improvement. Canada, our country, has a deep, deep need for the future leaders resident in this room this afternoon. Future leaders who are going to guide our nation's development in an increasingly complex world. Leaders who strive for excellence and persevere no matter what obstacles they encounter along the way. Leaders who build and inspire teams to answer society's most profound challenges and understand, leaders that understand that through diversity, the whole is truly greater than the sum of its parts. And leaders who are not afraid of taking risks, who have the courage to innovate and recognize that making mistakes is a necessary milestone along the road to success in their quest to drive innovation and realize great accomplishments. I'd like to take this opportunity to share with you six principles that have guided my life, which I hope will help you realize your personal definition of success. 
Firstly, gravitate to what inspires you. What inspires you in your chosen field and in life. And I promise you, the rewards will follow. Throughout my career, I've drawn inspiration from this quote by the famed playwright George Bernard Shaw that has hung in the TELUS boardroom for the past decade. People are always blaming their circumstances for what they are. Shaw's goes on to say that he doesn't believe in circumstances, that the people who get on in this world are the people who get up and look for the circumstances that they want. And if they can't find them, they make them. Sachez ce que vous voulez. Et si vous ne trouvez pas les occasions favorables, créez-les. Secondly, be prepared to challenge conventional paradigms with your innovation, your creativity, and your determination. You will need to work from contemporary rather than past realities with your eyes firmly fixed on the future, tuning out the naysayers along the way. Let your passion be your guide. As leaders, you will need to have the courage to express your views even when they're inconvenient or unwelcome and have the courage to pursue your dreams against the backdrop of indeterminate outcomes. Essentially, creating your own circumstances along your chosen path. Thirdly, in your quest for extraordinary accomplishment, you must push the outside of the envelope and take calculated and thoughtful risks. In creating the circumstances for your blueprint for success, plan to ask for forgiveness, not permission. A philosophy I suggest that you probably first tried out on your parents. Give it a go again. Look how it's worked out. I truly believe that our country's vibrancy as a nation, economically and socially, depends upon innovators and risk takers, people who seize the opportunity. I gotta tell you that this is a human asset that needs to be more pervasive across Canada. Fourthly, once you have established a winning strategy, demonstrate the resolve and the discipline to stick with it, especially when you encounter the inevitable bumps along the road to success. I can tell you from personal experience, there is no linear path to success. Il n'y a pas qu'un chemin pour réussir. Fifty, fifthly, measure yourselves individually, collectively, as an organization from a global standard, socially, economically, and competitively. Raise the bar. National borders are of little consequence in the environment that you are entering. Competition is widespread and our hyper-connected and socially empowered society guarantees that it will remain so. If you measure your innovation and achievements within the limits of a solely Canadian context, then I would say you're selling yourself short and you're setting your expectations too low. Raise the bar. Lastly, and perhaps at the end of the day, most importantly, recognize the importance and the responsibility that today's leaders hold in giving back to our communities and our fellow citizens who are in need. When I was younger and pursuing a career at the start in telecommunications, my father taught me an important lesson in life about how to create the circumstances 
to contribute to our society and help make a difference. He said, embrace technology as a way to enhance our quality of life. But never forget that it is not, and it never will be, a substitute for authentic human compassion. There is a symbiotic relationship between business success and the welfare of the communities in which we operate. It is logical. Indeed, I believe at a visceral level that in order to do well in business, we must also do good in the communities where we live, where we work, and where we serve as citizens. Nous donnons ou nous vivons est très important. Be passionate about giving back to those in need, particularly through volunteering your precious time and your skills towards what? Building healthier, more vibrant, and more caring communities. If you do that, those communities, through your contributions and ingenuity, will be more sustainable. Je vous encourage à prendre votre temps et utiliser vos talents pour bâtir les collectivités saines et durables. Graduates, as the next generation of leaders, you will create the circumstances to drive our economy and also influence the social prosperity of generations to come. I urge you, please continue building upon the extraordinary legacy created by our predecessors that we as Canadians freely enjoy today. In closing, as you build your career, please, from the heart, do not lose sight of what you ultimately value most in your life. Please do not let ambition or society's tendency towards immediate gratification that today's technology frequently enables. Don't let that prevent you from creating the circumstances to spend time with the people that you love. En terminant, je tiens à vous remercier pour ce grand honneur. Go and get them, class of 2012. Go out and make a difference. Go out and take risks along the way and achieve great things. But be an even greater human being along that road. Thank you for this wonderful honor. <laughs>